Welcome back to the Good Morning Niger Show. With coronavirus, a lot of businesses have found ways to sort of start to reinvent themselves. A lot of things have gone online. From interviewing guests, we have had our interviews online on Skype since, since COVID-19 started. A lot of things have changed. But now we're starting to see that even with re, um, as regards money and banking, it's starting to go online with the concept of virtual banking com coming into the scene. Now many people are confused. What is virtual banking? How does it work? How safe is it? Will my money not just disappear on the internet one day? All these questions are more we are going to be asking today. My name is Olive Emody, and I am pleased to introduce our first uh, guest for today. His name is Azubike Emody, <laughs> and he's a virtual banker. I mean, you, you can tell I'm very excited because we both have similar surnames. Hello, my brother that I've never met. How are you? <laughs> I'm very good, and good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Good to meet you. Good morning. All right, so uh, as we came, let's jump right into it, okay? Uh, we're speaking virtual banking. Uh, can you just uh, run us through uh, a quick summary of what virtual banking is all about? To the layman with the streets, we don't know about this thing. So just give us a brief run through. What is virtual banking? Okay, so we'll start with what the layman knows. Mm -hmm. um, they know what banking is. So the virtual banking is an online way of doing everything they know about banking. Okay. So rather than walk into a physical brick and mortar banking hall to do your banking, mm -hmm. you can do it virtually, whether on your phone, on your laptop, but it means that all the services you could ever think of that you walk into the bank for, including taking out cash, you can do all that online. Mm. So from opening up an account to using the account, to making payments, to paying for services, every other service you could have done by walking into the bank, up to dispute resolution. So you have a failed payment, you have you know, little issues like that. Mm -hmm. You can as well sit down in the comfort of your home and do all your banking. You don't actually need to walk into any building to do any banking transaction or anything related to, to fi your financials. Mm -hmm. So that's... And okay. uh, I'm certain that there are certain people who would have concerns as regards virtual bank banking. Now, the gains would be that you're not exposing yourself. First of all, we saw that at the start of the coronavirus pandemic in Nigeria... There are some banks that had to close down temporarily because they had come in contact with COVID-positive patients. But the downside would be that there are some people who are genuinely worried about internet fraudsters, scammers, and access to their account. Because we know that the primary way in which a lot of people lose their money in banks, apart from wrongful investments, would be through internet scammers. So how safe really is virtual banking? Okay, virtual banking is very safe. Um, the way it's designed these days, we're always a step ahead of the scammers. The issue is that some people fall prey to some funny schemes, in which case it's nobody's fault, it's their fault they fall prey to those schemes. But virtual banking, the way it is, the security systems we put in place to make sure the funds are protected, they are top notch. Um, it's getting better by the day, and it's always ahead of what the scammers are planning. There are several ways to authenticate that, oh, it's the user, it's the owner of the account that is doing this transaction. Um, the two-way, two-factor authentications and the rest of them. But same way, if you have cash in your purse and someone walks up to you and says something funny to you and say, okay, um, give me cash, would you give the person cash? The answer is no. That's why on our own part, we need to keep re-educating the clients. If you get a call from someone that says, Federal government says you should bring your BVN so that we can put some money in your account. Mm -hmm. It's obviously a lie. If someone calls you, give me your card number, give me the CVV number behind the card. There's obviously something funny going on. So the same way you would not give someone cash when they accost you on the road and say, oh, um, I like your face. Give me 100000 I'll make it 200000 for you. The same way you would not do that. If you want to do virtual banking, you also need to understand that those rules also apply. If it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. Log into your account, do your transactions, and log off from your account. So the way it's designed these days, even if your phone is open for any reason, that is not enough for someone to get your phone and complete a transaction. 
Even if you lose your phone, nobody can complete a transaction without your authorization. Before anybody can complete a transaction on your phone, that person needs to practically get into your brain. So virtual banking is very safe. Um, you can have all your funds in your virtual bank account. You can do all your transactions on your virtual bank. You just need to verify if I'm transferring money to only, for example, I need to put your account number and see that it's your name that's coming up. So that way, there's no stories of, oh, I transferred to the wrong person or someone used my account. It is you. You have your password to log in. You have your PIN to confirm that I have verified this and I want to pay. Okay. Now, uh, another concern regarding this virtual banking is uh, a lot of people, first of all, uh, a lot of Nigerians, grassroots Nigerians, are still not, uh, don't still have a, a level of trust in going to the bank or saving money in the bank. Now, the virtual banking is being introduced. And because of the current situation of the country, we know that uh, a lot of things have to be changed. A lot of um, things are now put in place. Now, a major concern for most of these people on the streets are like, okay, what if one day, one day, one day, internet decide to pack up? Now, so my money self go follow go because if you don't have because I realize that this is more of um, on uh, online situation. You know, if there is an internet problem and uh, would it affect my money if I want to transfer money and at that point is when network decide not to work or the money is sent, I don't get uh, an alert that it has been delivered. One or two issues internet wise. Now, this is a lot of concern for people. So, how would you say this? is uh, how would you sensitize people regarding this and letting them know that, come on, there's always a way around it. Is this going to be a concern? I'd like to know. Yeah, it's a, it's a concern. It's a genuine concern to a lot of people. We've, uh, um, we've had it several times. But what I just need them to understand is the same way, you know, people have comfort when I walked into the building. The same way you walk into that building, the infrastructure in that building is the same thing that powers the virtual bank. Mm. The difference is that we have provided a service, and you know, I'm trying to, you know, in a layman's term so that they will understand yes, it. Yes, yes. It's the same structure, but the difference is that you now have um, the virtual system of accessing those funds and doing your transaction. So even if internet is down, your money is still where it is. Mm. Even if you pay cash in the bank, the cash goes to the central bank. The structure is what carries your funding. That same structure applies in virtual banking. The every other money movement, physical money, all the deposits you make in the bank does not stay in the bank for it, so you have money in the bank. So that structure is in place. However, to also address that concern of, oh, what if the internet is down? Does it mean I can't do a transaction? Mm -hmm. There are some other infrastructure that is also being put in place to make sure that you always have access to your funds. For example, you have the USSD banking. Mm -hmm. USSD, you don't need internet. There are so many people that have internet issues. You just type the code for VBank. The code is star 5037 hash. Mm -hmm. So you just type star 5037 hash on your phone, whether internet enabled or not internet enabled, mm -hmm. and you have direct access to your funds. You can do transfers to people. You can generate cardless withdrawals. Whatever you still want to do, you can do on that platform. Mm. So the apps, we, we have a physical office where we, we sit to work and make sure that everything is running. We resolve issues. But we don't expect people to bring in cash and deposit. Everything about cash deposits, everything about payments has been automated. You don't actually need to touch cash. Mm. But that doesn't take away the fact that your money is your money and is sitting in an, in, in, in an infrastructure that protects it. No matter what happens to internet, no matter the length of time is shut down, your money is your money and you will always have access. The backup, the, the, the data backup, the data storage, in time, your okay. data is correct, including your amount in your account. Okay. As because there are certain things or certain provisions and additions, I would say, that were available uh, with regards to physical banking. When you walk into the bank, you know, we had the savings, the current, you had accounts, um, you had the mutual money market funds that could allow you to generate interest on 
certain amounts fixed in your bank. Do, does virtual banking also have provision for such options that can allow you make interest even whilst your money is resting? Or is it what you put inside that you go and collect? Well, absolutely. You, you get interest and you get a lot more than you will get by doing brick and mortar banking because the brick and mortar banking costs a lot to set up. Um, on the virtual banking, there's a lot of cost savings that has happened, which we directly pass back to the client. And how do we pass it back to the client? By not passing charges to them. We take up all the charges, alert charges and um, transfer charges. But more importantly, as you've already mentioned, the interest, the interest payments are higher than you would get in other places. So on your ordinary savings account, you earn as high as 6% per annum. Then you have the option of doing a target savings. On the target savings, you can earn as high as 8% per annum. Then on the fixed deposits, you can earn as high as 12 14% per annum, depending on, on the amount and tenor you pick. The most interesting part of all this is that you can create a target savings on your app. You can create the fixed deposit right on your app. The, 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 you get an instant letter. There's no, no, oh, it's midnight or it's Saturday or it's Sunday. You just tap a few buttons on your phone and your fixed deposit is done. Your investment is created and the interest is premium. On maturity, is what happens? Do you want the, the, the money you fixed back with interest, or do you want um, the, the rollover, the, the interest and the principal rolled over so that you can even earn, earn higher? So it's all, of, it's all available on the virtual bank. All right. Let's also look at financial inclusion. Now, we know that financial exclusion is such a thing. There's a thing such as that because there are many people who still in this day and age do not even have a physical bank account. So what provisions can be made for people in that regard, people who have zero knowledge of banks and how they work, physical banks, now we're telling them to move online. What are we even saying, you know? So how, how do we, what, what are, are there provisions for people in that regard? Yes, yes, there is. So what, what would keep up with, there's a lot of um, educating that we need to do. Uh, as stakeholders in the industry, um, it's our responsibility first of all. Then for you in the media, having a program like this is also part of that. People are sitting down and discussing it as we are discussing it, asking questions. What is this about? How do I get into this? So that's what needs to be done at that level. We will keep educating. We will keep moving into places where they are. I will give you a typical example. There's um, the only supermarket I shop in now is a supermarket that allows me pay by transfer. I don't want to pass card and be carrying POS back and forth. It's debited, it's not debited. If I try to do a transfer and it doesn't go through, I know it doesn't go through. You know, uh, but 99.999% of the time it goes through. But for cards, you don't know whether it will fail or it will fail. Yes, we issue, but you don't know there's a lot of infrastructure behind it that will support whether it fails or it doesn't fail. So when people go into that same shop and they see the option of transferring money and they see you working and you have it easy, you just transfer and you are off. They also want to know what's going on. Then the staff in those places also start educating people. You can use this option to make payments, you can scan codes, you can use USSD. You know, it's just we have to keep educating and more people are getting knowledgeable about how these things apply because they see other people do it and they ask questions. All right, sir. So before you leave us, uh, I just want you to be uh, to be, give us this final um, uh, clarity. Are you saying that the virtual banking is it's cheaper to run than the, controversy, the normal conventional banking that we're used to because people are complaining that service charge from nowhere they get debited for this and that and that and that would you say this is not going to be happening if uh, people you know key into the virtual banking space or are you saying that it's going to happen but it will be reduced we'd like to know that well um for me, uh, for some other people, it's reduced. But for me, uh, we don't see any reason to make those charges now. Mm. Okay. 
because the client acquisition system makes it imperative that you just have to give back to the clients in some way. Um, so those charges, there's no point taking them for us now. Yes, that's what it is. We don't charge for a lot. For Naira, you have 10 transactions, you get debited for Naira. Rather, like I mentioned, if you create an account, even if you decide you don't want to do any investment, you already have 6% interest on right. that account. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the month, rather than get debits, you get credit. Mm. If you also make transfers, you, you don't get charged to any transfer fees. So if you have 100,000 100, Naira in your account and you need to pay somebody 100,000, mm -hmm. you don't go and pay 99,900 mm -hmm. to, to have extra. make a lot yeah. You just transfer the hundred thousand, and it's done. So, and in addition to that, even for the client acquisition um, strategy, we've also introduced the village structure where people at home, people that don't, you know, by the time we come out from this COVID, you hear ish, uh, stories of people losing their jobs. Mm -hmm. We've created what we call the village program, where people that sit in their houses, people that don't have jobs, people that are looking for work, or people that have jobs but are looking for a second way of making income, can just create their own account. Then on that platform, also now sign on clients to VBank. And in doing that, we capture it for them. Just see it as an account officer you meet in a bank. Their job is to sit down, fill form and paper, open account for you, follow you around to open, Pay money into your account, you know, you know, manage you up to the point that your accounts become very valuable. Mm -hmm. The same way people can sit down in their homes because it's a virtual bank and do the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Get your friends, get your family, get them sign on, and you can earn as high as two million per month for doing that. It starts at thirty thousand, then it's layered, you know, depending on your efforts and how you. How, how, how you grow your clients you can mm. earn as high as two million a month mm. so for our village project i would recommend it to everybody listening to me we are still in um, covid break people at home they can go check it out on our website or we you download v by vfd create your own account first of all then you go to more click on start your own bank all right From start your all right own, all right thank your you. own bank okay Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Azubike Emwadi. <laughs> it's been a very, very insightful conversation. And I'm hoping that Nigerians would, uh, you know, welcome this new uh, era of uh, virtual banking because it, is, uh, look, it looks like this is where the world is headed due to the coronavirus situation of, you know, keeping everybody at home and keeping everybody away from each other. Thank you very much for this conversation. It was very, very insightful, sir. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. All right. Have a great day. All right. You. you too. You too. Okay. So we're going straight into a uh, workout. We, have, we need our five minutes workout like we always do with TL so that uh, we can use to ease up our, you know, our muscles, our bones and every other thing because, hey, it's the start of a new week and you need to start very, very energized and ready to go. Okay. So let's go straight to five minutes workout 